Hello everyone. So, I'll be talking about really the only brushes that you really need and like their differences and their use cases. Then we'll branch off from there on what specific type of textured brushes that you can use to add to that like tool belt. Now you can see like on the top of my head, um, I have like these 10 brushes. So they were mapped to my number row. The first five would be one to five. Then the next five would be control one, two, three, four, and five. And I made it that way. So I have like really quick access to these brushes and tools so that I don't have to manually search it, you know, browse for it and or click on one of these specific brushes because you know uh, most of the time when i'm painting i'd rather have my hand stay on the canvas you know just paint and paint do all the switching and like selecting different tools with my left hand for the keyboard shortcuts all right so let me explain the philosophy first all right so there's only like three brushes right that you really need there's the workhorse work there's the ink pen and there's the soft brush or the airbrush so these three can go a really long way if you know how to use them and um so let's start with the workhorse the workhorse is basically something that you paint with you can use it and finish a painting by only using that brush so it's perfectly reasonable to just use that 80 percent of the time so that's what i mean by a workhorse now, this depends on you on what kind of workhorse you want. I personally like this one, which is just the hard round brush. Very traditional, I feel like. Traditional in a sense of old school looking digital paintings used a lot of the round brush. But other people might not like that as much as me. So I'll give you some other options. So there's this one. I adjusted it to my needs but i think this came from Krita, like one of the default brushes and it works the same way compared to the hard round brush this has size sensitivity so the harder i press um the larger it is while on my hard round brush you can see that it doesn't really change the size depending on how hard i press uh, on the tablet but in general, the workhorse should always have some form of opacity control. And what I mean by that is the lighter you press, the, the lighter the tone will be. So this is great for general painting where you can blend specific tones together, specific colors, blend them together by just color dropping um, in betweens, things like that. And you can also use it for large scale gradients if i use this one i can create a gradient like you can see here there's like a soft gradient that's happening so it's really versatile and that's the beauty of a workhorse you should check out what kind of workhorse suits you the best so i recommend either this one the detailed brush or the hard round brush and there's some other ones from digital if i remember correctly here digital so these ones work great as well for example this one uh, this could be a workhorse chisel smooth has a more interesting shape to it compared to say just the hard hard round brush where it's just a circle uh this could also work i think mainly those those types of qualities are the ones that you should look out for uh, it should also have little to no texture maybe looks something like maybe this could work as a workhorse but you can tell that it has a texture to its um, stroke depends on you what what i don't recommend is using something like this as a workhorse where the texture is like really overpowering and really prominent mainly what you want the workhorse to be is you know really versatile and the more texture a brush has the more niche its use cases are so the hard round brush while it's simple it can be used for everything but this kind of brush for example or this kind of brush uh, where it still has a bit of texture 
while this kind of brush where you can clearly see like there's visible gaps between the pixels looks like they're fiber that's like a fiber brush the less useful it will be to you know general cases but it's really great for specific textures right so that's what i meant by use cases mm. all right moving on next is the ink pen so for the workhorse mainly um i wanted i want you guys to have something like this right where you can control the opacity of the brush the ink pen is sort of the opposite of that it's for really specific mark making it's like if you're working on a canvas right imagine that the canvas is dry i'm talking about oil painting imagine that the canvas is dry and you want to say sketch something on top because you want to revise something um, using a pencil for that type of work isn't too ideal because it's really faint and since it's on a painted texture it's not as visible but using a really inky pen or say a marker or yeah like a permanent marker that works really well because you know the ink stays on top and like it's really opaque it's really sharp <clears throat> the one that i use is this one it has a bit of texture on it which you can have but you know but for the ink pen it should be little to no texture at all but this one has a bit of texture on it and you can see that it also has size sensitivity and that's great because it creates more interesting shapes for mark making say for example i have a really like worked on canvas right? so there's lots of tones everywhere what's great about the inking brush is you can kind of carve out like there's lots of gradients here lots of transitions but using the ink pen you can really carve out its place in the painting without having to press so hard on your workhorse so if i use my ink pen i can say create a strong silhouette over here really carve out that um, shape or the silhouette that i'm making but i can also do that using my workhorse of course but this time i have to press really hard to get the results that i want and using a workhorse for something like this isn't really ideal because say you stay at 90 percent opacity right so something like this so it's not perfectly opaque like this um what's gonna happen is there's going to be these kinds of edges where the stroke that you made isn't completely opaque so there's gonna be some banding banding is what you call these like overlapping areas of um transparent layers and transparent strokes usually it's meant to show that this kind of banding is bad where you can clearly see uh, these overlapping areas generally you'd want to avoid that so um, instead of trying to press really hard on your workhorse just use a more opaque and thick pen or brush so you don't have to worry about that other types of course um, is this one so instead of um, the hard round brush this is this is the same hard round brush but it has um size pressure sensitivity and you know of course the great thing about size sensitivity is you can create really interesting shapes with it and that's like the strength of the ink pen is being able to create marks and shapes that are very very deliberate and you can really design its silhouette its contours a great example of this would be say i want to create a cloud well, let's create a gradient for our cloud now i'm going to use my ink pen to really carve out um, the silhouette of the cloud that i'm making so something like that um using gradients of course alongside the ink brush or the ink pen is really really powerful because you can see that uh, it provides a nice sense of contrast between the soft transitions and like the really harsh transitions between um these tones of course i can make this a bit brighter to add more highlights to my cloud but you get but you get the idea right um it's all about mark making it's all about shape design and ink pen is the best brush for that or that that archetype is the best brush for that then of course the next one is the airbrush uh, which is self-explanatory honestly 
it's the one that you use mostly for blending or like creating this nice wash of color to a large area. It's great for vignettes also. So if you want to say, give more focus to the center area of the canvas, you can also add like a subtle vignette so that we're more inclined to look at this area over here. Um, so for airbrush, uh, you can go crazy with it. You don't necessarily have to use the default soft brush. I actually don't recommend you to do that because it's quite one dimensional. What I do suggest is using a little bit of gradient, a little bit of grain, something like this. So this can work as a soft brush because, you know, um, it's still um, creating this gradient, but it has this wonderful texture that it's creating. It's not just um, a pixel gradient. It's more like um, scribbles or hatching. These kinds of brushes, like um, dotted ones, um, can also work as some sort of gradient brush, right? Because it works the same way. You're using it mainly to fill a large space. Also this one. But these ones need a bit more adjusting in the brush settings so that you can properly use it as a gradient brush. But yeah, you can just use this um, airbrush, then maybe add a texture over here on the pattern, pick a pattern that you like, maybe this one, adjust its scale or brightness like this. Now I have this sort of brush it has a bit of texture in it. It's mainly for blending and like making large transitions, covering large areas, things like that. And with these three archetypes, you can pretty much create any painting you want, but I'll try to show the other seven brushes on my tool belt to give you some ideas on what else can you add. By the way, these 10 brushes, you can map them to, you know, the hot, to your hotkeys the same way by going over here on tools then scripts, then 10 brushes, and you can map map your hotkeys over here on uh, the keyboard shortcuts panel and you can go to 10 brushes, activate brush preset one, two, three, etc. All right. So my other brushes, uh, one is an eraser, which you may or may not add. You can just use any brush and transform it um, by pressing E, right? So it's not really needed, but you can, you can add it to your hotkey so that you have like quick access to it instead of pressing E, then pressing E again to undo that eraser mode. Now the other one is this one. Um, this is really, really niche use. I like to add like a bit of distortion tools to my like quick access tool belt. What this does is it's just, um, moves and like smudges things around. So if I want to say move a certain layer, instead of using the move tool, I can just use this brush instead. And you can also, you know, of course, create some really interesting textures and shapes with it. But yeah, it's not really used that often. It's more of like a utility tool. Next up is this one. It's the mixer brush. Um, I have a separate video covering how to use the mixer brush and or specifically here on Krita. It's called the clone tool. So I have a separate video on that if you want to check it out. But basically it's um, it's like sampling from the already existing canvas that you have. Say I control click over here. I can paint um, this particular area on a different area. I can also do that here, paint over here. Even you can see that um, it kind of copies this entire texture and uses that as the brush tip for my next brush stroke. So really powerful like shape exploration tool, but yeah, it's not really used that often since it's a really strong brush and the textures it can create can be a bit overwhelming at times. Next up is this one, uh, which is just the general favorite brush that I use for creating random shapes. Say I want to add a bit of texture here. Say this is a tower. Instead of creating those like tiny details all by myself and like marking it, I'd rather use something like this where it can create those like really weird textures without me having to manually 
um, paint everything. Overall, just a texture brush. You can replace this with any type of textured brush that you kind of prefer. Then the next one is the blending brush, which just blends things to oblivion instead of using my airbrush and say I want to blend these two edges together. Instead of using my airbrush and um, going over here, then going back, then going over here to blend it back, and going over here again to blend it back, I can just use the blend brush to just blend it all together in one go instead of like using two or three strokes to blend it. Then finally, um, the distortion brush or the distort move tool, um, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of like a smudge tool again, but this is more of a general use case. I use this for changing proportions and like changing silhouettes uh, quite often. Actually, I think this is a really useful one. I recommend having this in your like quick axis tool belt as well. It's great for say, this is a character I want to make. Um, the character taller or say I want to change the shape of the circle behind make it a more natural circle to make the head smaller things like that so it really saves a lot on time on re-rendering you don't want to change the color you don't want to change the value you just want to change the composition and shapes and that's where the distort move tool really shines is just making quick work of those proportion issues and like placement issues things like that and i think that's about it um so just, just to recap these three is like these three are all that you need to create paintings or you know decent paintings but adding um other utility tools that's more suited for your workflow for example i used to be an oil painter and i really like that kind of feel but for the style that i want i want you know more traditional textures on my strokes i mainly paint on one layer that's why this distort move tool is so great for me because i can't manipulate layers all by themselves things like that and these are the tools that i've found to be useful for my workflow and your workflow might be different you might be a comic artist so you might need more inking stuff more like stuff about filling in colors and gradients things like that so um, you should definitely develop your own sort of quick access tool belt but in general these three are the ones that i've found to be more commonplace in all disciplines that i've like seen and yeah if you've come this far uh make sure to leave a like and if you want to see more videos like this one make sure to subscribe i'll see you next time Bye bye Click here on the left to see me discuss the clone tool in more detail or on the right if you want me to discuss brushes and shape design.